I have to first share a personal experience with you. Some time ago, I was in my cellar, and while I was about to switch the light off, a potato fell off the shelf. I wasn't hurt, but I was shocked. While there was a switch for light, there was no switch for gravity. There is no way to turn gravity off. As a theoretical physicist, I had to do something to prevent all potatoes worldwide from knowing this fate. Out of the four fundamental interactions, gravity is the only one that is not under technological control. We are currently using devices such as electromagnets, such as optical instruments, thermoelectric radioisotope generators, or nuclear reactors, but gravitational field generators is a technology that is left to science fiction. And if you go to science fiction, there are uh, lots of different types of gravitational field generators you can find. And yet, we do not even have the first piece or plan of such a technology. Even worse, most of my colleagues, physicists, are studying gravity in a passive way. We study permanent, pre-existing sources of gravitation. If you want to get rid of the Earth's gravitational field, well, start digging or call the Death Star. But there is no way to turn gravity off. In science fiction, you can find amazing applications like artificial uh, gravity generators that allow heroes to walk around their spaceships just as if they were on Earth. You can uh, travel interstellar distances through shortcuts in space-time, dubbed wormholes or portals. You can travel back in time using cars that are powered by an admixture of gasoline and lightning. But what if one day I can gather enough dark energy to open up a wormhole? What should I, how should I proceed to do so? How should I proceed in practice to bend space-time, to modify space and time to do this? That's a question that is not answered so far. There is a way. To, uh, in conventional science, to modify space and time. It's called the equivalence principle. We do not have to wait for the promises of extra dimension, dark matter, dark energy, or vacuum energy, to start modifying space and time in our laboratory. There is a possibility in the theory we know in general relativity. In Einstein equivalence principle is one of the most well-established law of physics ever. It states gravitation as absolutely universal. Potatoes, whatever binches or charlotte, <laughs> baked or fried, they are just different kinds of Newton apples. And all fruits and vegetables do fall in the same way. All objects, whatever their chemical composition, whatever the amount of energy and the types of energy that binds them, they all participate to gravity in the same way. But their participation is also active. All kinds of energies create gravity in the same way. So you can choose, instead of inertial sources of gravitation, instead of mass, you can choose one adjustable form of energy, the magnetic one, for instance, and then you are able to produce gravity at will. So my modest contribution to save all potatoes worldwide from foaming off shelves was to uh, write a scientific paper in general relativity, which was published in a famous journal recently, and to show how electromagnets can be used to bend space and time. And so, as I have been told that equations were forbidden for such talks, I had to come with a fake prototype. So I will ask the, uh, the guys uh, on the back to move to this prototype. 
So the, the fake prototype is called the Gravitron, and you should see quite soon the duplication of the screen there. So the Gravitron is the prototype of a gravitational field generator. And the idea, it consists of an electromagnet in which you will send an extremely high electric current. This electric current will produce an extremely high magnetic energy that is enough to bend space-time. With this gravitron, you will see some effects which are usual in Einstein's theory of uh, general relativity, but this time they will be done in a controlled way. So you will have uh, laser beams going back and forth inside the uh, gravitational field generator here, and on the back, on, be, uh, below that, you will have the reference to show you what happens when the gravitational field is switched off. So there are several effects that you can see. First, if I increase the electric current, I will increase the magnetic energy. And you can see that the light color changes when you uh, look at the part of the beam which is at the center of the electromagnet. This is because light loses energy while escaping a gravitational field. This is an effect that is well known. In fact, this effect is accounted for in the global positioning system. And if you do not account for this effect, the global positioning system would not be precise with less than 10 kilometers. It's called the Einstein effect. Another effect, if I now freeze uh, both light beams, is that the magnetic field has shrunk space. And therefore, the distance light is traveling has been changed inside the gravitational field. As a result, the maxima and the minima of the waves are now shifted. And this shift can be measured. Actually, that's the way we detect gravitational waves, as you might have heard about last, uh, last month. So the last of these effects, and now we start from the beginning, is when you look at the timer of the experiment on the uh, lower left corner. So the, the, this indicates you the lap timer of the experiments, indicating how Second, how time flows inside the experiment. If I increase the current, increase, increase, time freezes. And if I switch the light off, if I switch the electric current off, what you will see is that, in fact, I've just traveled into your future. Because a few seconds have spent, maybe you have noticed something. I did not nothing, so notice something. My sentence was quite short. But I moved into your future for two or three seconds. Because this type of generator is also a time machine toward your future. And your future is bright. So with the, the Gravitron and the, the idea of using electromagnets, you can produce modification of space and time. The problem is that gravity is an extremely faint force. And to have such effect that has been shown there, effects that are the kind of effects, the kind of amplitude you can find close to a compact object like a black hole, you would need electric currents which are billions of trillion times the highest electric currents we are able to achieve. So in practice, the applications we can have with current technology are not for producing strong gravitational field, but very weak gravitational fields. But those fields, even if they are weak, they must be there. They, they must have gravitational field associated to magnetic fields. Otherwise, Einstein's theories would be put in danger. That's an original way to test Einstein theories of general relativity, because usually Einstein theories of, of relativity is tested with composite systems, with 
apples that fall or with stuff which are made of different kinds of energy and not with pure magnetic energy. It's an original way to test Einstein theory like never before, with energy that could be switched on and off at will. So my proposal is also similar to what is done in particle physics. In particle physics, you have particle accelerators which acts as generators. They produce particles, new particles, and you couple those generators with detectors, particle detectors that capture the particles. And doing so, you force the apparition of new particles like the Higgs boson. With my proposal, I propose to use electromagnets and intense electromagnets to produce very weak gravitational fields and to detect them with interferometric detectors, like those of gravitational waves. Doing so, you will be able to force space and time modifications and to see how far this is in agreement with Einstein's principle. Those kind of experiments in fundamental science usually come with indirect and direct applications. Remember that uh, in the quest of the Higgs boson at CERN, they have developed a tool which is called the World Wide Web, which is a kind of uh, protocol allowing you to uh, transfer data. Can you imagine the direct and the indirect applications of creating gravity in the lab? Of course, Amazing applications like artificial gravity generators and inertial reducer or flying cars are a bit far away. And to be economically viable, they will also need gravity to be stronger at some point. Because you would need to put affordable amount of energy to produce large effects. And gravity is a faint force. But wait, do we know the behavior of gravity with intense magnetic fields? No, because we never tested it. So my proposal uh, will allow you to, to glimpse behind Einstein theory, to see how far gravity is still that faint with large magnetic uh, energies. If you want to ever make one step forward to amazing applications like those of science fiction and those we cannot imagine yet, you will also need to move to the engineering level. You will not get anything by studying passively gravity just as we usually do behind our telescopes. You need to require gravitational engineers. So today I propose you to dream of science fiction with one of the most beautiful theory we have, Einstein theory of general relativity, which is just 100 years old. It is a perilous exercise to guess all the rewards that pioneers would be granted in their quest to master the untamed gravity. Gravitation is the fundamental interaction that has been identified as such only in the 17th century and yet it still remains undomitable. While all the other interactions have been harnessed in our laboratories, yes, controlling gravity is still defying physical science. The question is, for how long? Thank you. <laughs>